Okay, welcome everybody. So uh, this is introduction to Yasson session. My name is Dmitry Kornilov. I am JSON binding specification lead. I also participated in Yasson development because Yasson is JSON binding uh, reference implementation. Uh, first thing I need to show you is that so uh, this is obligated from Oracle to do that. Basically, you have to read it carefully. Remember this. Uh, this is the legal stuff. Basically, saying that uh, you should not make critical business decision based on what I I will say today. Okay. So uh, you shouldn't trust me. Don't trust me. So remember, X Files Agent Mulder. He was keep saying trust no one. Right. So don't trust me today. But on other case, uh, Yasson is released already. There is 1.4 release, so we are not talking about any uh, uh, kind of snapshot version. So we are talking about version that's been released already. But anyway, uh, a little bit about myself. So uh, I work in Oracle. I'm leading two specifications: JSON binding and JSON processing. I'm very proud that last year I was awarded as an outstanding spec lead. 2016. Uh, I'm also Eclipse Link project committer and uh, I am E4J PMC member. Uh, this is the agenda, so uh, we'll start with explaining what kind of JSON technologies are included in Java EE8. After that, talk about JSON binding in general. Uh, and uh, after we jump to Yasson, which is the main bit, and if we have time, it's only 35 minute session, so uh, I suppose that we will. Uh, we will have a Q&A session, so please your uh, keep your questions to the end. Okay, so JSON technologies in Java EE8, start with that. And uh, uh, first is what is JSON? You know, funny enough, uh, I didn't have this section before, but I included it because uh, some time ago when I was presenting uh, Jason B uh, on uh, some Jack meeting, I think it was, and I was already at the middle explaining some configuration or customization, and uh, someone had questions, so I, uh, and the question was, uh, Oh, everything looks nice, customization is quite cool, but what is JSON? Okay, so this is why uh, I included this section to explain what JSON is. And this is JSON. Uh, technically, I'm right, this is actually JSON. Have, have you seen Friday 13? So this is a guy, you didn't see, okay. So this is a bad guy from the uh, JSON Wurhees, right? Uh, but this is not the guy we are going to talk today. Remember the second slide? I said, don't trust me, so related to that. Uh, this is also JSON, so JSON Born. Uh, actually, uh, JSON Born is JSON B, right? So uh, <laughs> we had an idea to call reference implementation of JSON binding JSON Born, but you know, it didn't, it didn't go for legal anyway. Uh, okay, so it was the last joke for today. Uh, JSON, JavaScript object notation. I, I think you know what is that, right? So the text format looks like that. Uh, if, if, uh, if object is inside curly brackets, it's list inside square brackets, and there are keys and values. Very simple. It's a subset of JavaScript. It's lightweight data interchange format, so it's widely used now microservices, so JSON, JSON ex exchange and JSON between each other. And it's very simple, it's only three objects. JSON object, JSON array, JSON value. So JSON support is included in Java EE8, right? Uh, full JSON support. And uh, this support is implemented in two APIs. One is JSON processing API, and another one is JSON binding API. So JSON processing API is like JSON parser. Uh, 
and JSON binding API is uh, like serializing and serializing JSON documents to and from uh, Java objects to JSON document and vice versa. So if first one is similar to domain stacks comparing to XML world, uh, then uh, JSON binding is uh, similar to JAXB. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, JSON binding is new in Java EE8. Before Java EE7, it has only JSON processing API and uh, uh, JSON support was not full. Now, then, JSON binding API added, uh, JSON support is full. By the way, JSON processing API was also updated to version 1.1. .1. It has some new features there. It's out of scope, but just for your information. Okay, uh, now let's talk about JSON binding API in general, and after that we'll jump to Yasson itself. So, uh, first of all, some links. JSON binding is a uh, uh, specification. It has its own JSR number, JSR367. Uh, here is the official website. So, it has some code snippets, some general information, documentation. So, this is the entry point. If you want to read about JSON binding, just go here. Uh, the next one is a repository on GitHub. It's open source. You can go there, check it out. Uh, PDF specification in PDF is also there, so you can download from there. Uh, issue tracker, if you find something funny, go to issue tracker. Uh, JCP page, if you would like to see the progress of the spec itself, who is on the expert group, uh, when it was released, when public uh, draft was released, and these kind of things. Uh, and uh, the last thing is groups. Uh, when we moved a project from Java.net to GitHub, uh, we are not using mailing lists anymore. We are using this group, group IO thing, which is quite modern. It's like a mix of uh, forums and mailing lists. So this is for communication. So, what is JSON binding? As I was saying before, uh, it's an API uh, for serialization, deserialization, Java objects to and from JSON documents, similar to JAXB. Uh, when actually we uh, started working on that, uh, the idea was not to uh, make a super cool new API for JSON binding. Uh, actually, it was the opposite day. So we looked at the technologies that are currently on the market, like uh, Jackson, Genson, JSON, and so on, uh, and uh, tried to standardize it, try to find feature, more requested features, most used features, and uh, make a standard out of them. Actually, we have uh, guys from Genson, from JSON in the expert group. So uh, they were participating in creating the standard. Uh, we try to make very rich default system. Uh, you know what iJSON is? You know iJSON? No, okay. So uh, iJSON is um, some kind of a standard uh, for defining JSON format for internet communication. Okay. So by default, JSON binding supports iJSON with three exceptions. I will touch this exception later. So, uh, we have rich defaults, which is suitable for most cases, but if it's not enough, we have a customization API, annotation-based and uh, runtime uh, configuration using uh, API. Uh, it's natural flow onto JSONP, as I was saying that full JSON supported JSONP plus JSONB, before it was only JSON P, so support, just a half support of JSON. So what's the difference between JSON binding and JSON? So uh, sometimes people don't understand the difference. So uh, JSON B is the interface, JSON is implementation. So JSON B is a standard, JSON is a reference implementation of the standard. Uh, JSON is Eclipse Foundation project. It's a part of Glassfish 5, it's a part of uh, uh, Vast Liberty, um, maybe some other application service, I don't know. Uh, all this is going to be transferred to E for J very soon. Okay, so let's talk about Yasun now. 
some links at the beginning. So Yasun has its own website hosted uh, on Eclipse Foundation, uh, a repository on GitHub, and the issues tracking on, uh, on uh, in GitHub. So uh, I think the last two is most useful. So look at the sources, look at the basic information, and look at the issues or submit your issues there. Uh, here are the Maven dependencies, right? So this is the Maven dependency for JSON binding API. Uh, and this is for Yasun. So if you have Java EE project, you don't need that, right? It will be provided by your application server, so just that. And uh, if you have Java SE application, want to use Yasun there, you need both of them. And uh, actually, uh, we prepare in Yasun 101, uh, but it's not released yet, uh, where it has a lot of bug fixes. So if you would like to use a snapshot version of Yasun, you need to include uh, Eclipse Yasun snapshots repository to your project, which is here. Okay, now let's talk about Yasun features. So I was saying about default mapping already. So uh, basically, uh, this is a set of defaults uh, specified in the spec. So each JSON B implementation must have that. So no configurations, no annotations. You create JSON B engine just like that. One line of code, very easy. And here is the scope of defaults as is defined by the spec, so it says blah, 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 blah. I'm going to read that because I'm going to explain uh, all of this later. And I was talking about JSONB engine. What is JSONB engine? It's basically this kind of interface. It has overloaded from JSON and to JSON methods. Basically from JSON is deserialization and to JSON is serialization uh, with different sources. And all methods are actually through exceptions. I just omitted them to save space. So this is the main uh, class to use. And uh, here is a sample so you see how it works. So uh, we have some Java classes, Java model, right, uh, for a list of JSONs, right? So uh, this code, sorry, it's a bit, yeah. So uh, this code actually uh, creating the model. So look, I create one person, I create another person, I create a list of these uh, persons. And these two lines is actually serialization itself. It can be in one line, actually. So creating JSONB engine and use two JSON to serialize it. And it will produce this kind of document. Uh, it won't look so nice because I formatted it. By default, formatting is switched off, so it will be just in one line. Uh, but, uh, you know, inside it's the same as here. Okay, now let's go through the default scope just to, uh, I will explain how, how spec defines it and um, uh, how, how it's used. So basically, uh, basic types and specific types. So this is what's supported by the spec. From, uh, primitives uh, and uh, big types. URL, URI, and optionals. So uh, support for that must be done in every single JSONB implementation by the spec, and Yasun has it as well. Uh, date and time. Maybe it's too small. No, maybe not. It's okay. So uh, we support Java util classes and Java time classes. And uh, the second column, it's a format used for conversion. Uh, looks very different, uh, but uh, all these formats are ISO formats. So look, ISO, 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 ISO here, right? So uh, basically by default, Yasun and JSONB uh, using ISO formats. Uh, uh, one thing to mention here, 
if for instance we have a calendar and time portion is not there, just the date portion, it doesn't add anything. So it doesn't add zeros, uh, it just uh, uses uh, date portion without the time. Uh, to see how it looks like, uh, here is a sample, right? So uh, if we serialize a date using this format, right, uh, it will look like this. So look, this is the ISO format. Zeros are here because uh, date is actually a number. Right? Uh, the second sample is a calendar without the time portion. So look, it looks like this, so no time added, no zeros, nothing like that. And uh, here are instant duration and period, so like that. So this is how ISO format looks like. Arrays collection. So here is the list of all supported types. It's more or less what Java has. Uh, not going to read it, not going to go through on that. So this is provided by the spec. And uh, JSON-P types. So uh, JSON-B and JSON-P are like brothers, right? Actually, uh, uh, JSON-B is using JSON-P for parsing JSON documents. So it supports JSON-P types out of the box means that you can have JSON object created or get it from, if you have a JAXRS application, for instance, you can get it as a parameter, uh, do something with that, and after that, uh, use JSONB to deserialize it from JSON object to, no, I have two JSON here, but it doesn't matter, it will be both. Oh, maybe not, but anyway. So uh, where are use cases for that? So uh, using JSONP for manipulating raw JSON and after that use JSONB for actually binding. Uh, at the end, I have a link to samples. I have a sample project there. You can find samples for all of these small use cases. So uh, what kind of classes are supported? So public and protected static nested classes, anonymous classes only for serialization, inheritances supported, meaning that all parent objects will be serialized or deserialized. And for default mapping, we require uh, existence of uh, public or protected no argument constructor. Uh, if you don't have it, it's okay, uh, there is a special customization to uh, deal with this use case, but we are talking default mapping now. Uh, fields. Final fields are serialized. Static fields are skipped, so we don't support static. Uh, transient fields are skipped as well. Null fields, though this is interesting, null fields are skipped, so uh, by default again, but uh, if uh, you actually want null fields to be serialized, very special customization. You need to switch it on and null fields will be serialized. Uh, field order, alphabetical, lexicographical by default, and the yes on respect parents, so meaning that by default, parent class fields are placed before child class fields and all of them are sorted uh, alphabetically within, within, the, within the class. So here's a sample, so imagine that we have parent class, right, two fields, parent B, parent A, if we serialize, we have that, looks sorted, right? And if we have inheritance, child class extends parent, we respect parents, so parents first, and after that, child class fields, and all of them are sorted, okay? So this is default behavior. It can be changed by customization as well. Uh, this is scope and field access strategy. What does it mean? Um, this is exactly from the spec. I put this information here. Maybe I'll explain it a uh, different way. So uh, you have a class and uh, uh, this strategy defines uh, what properties are actually serialized or deserialized because uh, different properties can have different visibilities, right? So uh, are private properties serialized or not? or protected or whatever. So this is uh, the definition how it works by default, right? And uh, it works the way that uh, we respect getters and setters. So if there is a getter for property, then, uh, and if this getter is public, then it's serialized, right? 
If there is no getter, then we look at the field itself. And if field is public, it's serialized. If not, then skip next field, right? Deserialization is the same, but the opposite way around. So we're looking at setter, not at the getter, right? Uh, here is a sample. So imagine that we have a class like that. Uh, and the field names are self-descriptive. So I, I didn't put getter setters here to save space. And here is the result of serialization. So look, public final field, no getter setters, serialized, because final is supported. Is the getter, no getter, field, public, public, final supported, serialized. But private final field is not serialized. So no getter, field is there, private, and. Right. Static field, static is not supported, that's why it's not here. Uh, public with no getter, again, no getter, field, public, fine. Public with private getter, now this is sort of weird, right? Uh, but it's not going to be serialized because look at the getter first, getter is private, not, not serialized. Field, field itself is public, but getter is uh, private. We are not looking, if we found some situation there actually, uh, we, it stops basically. So uh, going through the steps and if this condition is wrong, we just stop it, we are not looking uh, further. Public null field, this is totally correct. It's not, uh, not serialized only because it's null. By default, null fields are not serialized. If the value is different, it would be here. Private with no getter, again, no getter, private, and private with public, this, this is the standard Java bin thing, right? Public getter, setter, and uh, private field, it's there. And uh, these two, uh, actually, it's a virtual field. So we have a getter, uh, and uh, there is no field. And it's supported because getter is there, right? So we're looking at the getter, getter is there, it's fine, it's public, so this field is serialized. Okay, possibly I need to talk a bit faster. Uh, but we finished with default, and now we are coming to customizations, right? So, uh, there are two types of customizations, annotations and runtime configuration. Runtime configuration is basically two classes, JSONB config, JSONB builder, and uh, uh, here you see how JSONB config looks like. So it has a variety of methods which you use to build your uh, configuration. And after that, to build a custom JSONB engine, you just pass this configuration to the config method of JSONB builder and it builds you a customized JSONB engine. Okay. Uh, with provider, uh, it's provided if you would like to use not default JSONP, right? So if you have another implementation of JSONP, you can use different implementation using that method. So here is the list of customizations. Property names, order, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I will uh, just quickly touch each of them and we'll start with property names, a uh, very common use case. So you properties, your property is named like first name, for instance, but you would like to use different name, like name, right? So JSONB property annotation can be placed on field, can be placed on getter, can be placed on setter, right? If you place it on getter, it means that it's serialized but provided name. If on setter, deserialized with provided name. So the weird use case of having one property serialized with nine, one name and deserialized with another name is supported. Uh, maybe we don't need it, but uh, supported. And this property can be put on field, getter, setter, as I said, and parameter. And parameter is a special use case for custom instantiation. I'll touch a bit later. Uh, another way, global way to change naming is provide property naming strategy. And uh, this is if you uh, would like to change naming globally. For instance, you would like to use uh, property with underscore, so property with dashes instead of default, right? So, uh, possible to do. Uh, we support uh, basically some predefined strategies, look here. 
or you can create your custom one, whatever, and plug it in using with property name and strategy method of JSONB config. Another customization is order, right? I was saying it by default, lexicographical order is used, but there are two more predefined orders. Any means no order. Uh, use it if you would like to gain a little bit of performance, just a little bit, right? Uh, because sorting algorithms are very fast. Uh, and another order is reverse. Uh, or you can use JSONB property order annotation as it's shown here, where actually you can specify properties. Uh, how you would like output, order of properties in the output document. So basically bar two will be first, and bar one will be second, and all others will be uh, with undefined order. Uh, to apply property, strat property order strategy, one of that, you should use JSONB config with property order strategy method. Ignoring properties is also a uh, very common use case. You can use Java transient key, uh, uh, keyword for that, or JSONB transient annotation. And it also can be put on getter, on setter. If you put it on getter, uh, it's ignored from marshalling. And if on setter, it's ignored from uh, unmarshalling. Uh, if it's on field, then both are ignored, marshalling and unmarshalling. Uh, visibility, oh, this is what I was talking about, respecting getters, respecting visibility, uh, default strategy. Uh, it can be changed, right? And it can be changed by implementing property visibility strategy interface. So implement your one, like I'm demonstrating here. So my strategy implements property visibility strategy, right? And after that, you can plug it in. Uh, Use an annotation on a class if you would like to be applied only to one class, or uh, globally using with property visibility strategy method of JSONB config. Null handling. Okay, I was always saying that null fields are ignored, but this is how to change it. Uh, if it's on field, you use JSONB property, and the second parameter is nullability. True is nullable, meaning that null value will be actually serialized. Uh, and on the type level, on the class level, on the package level, there is another annotation called JSONB nullable, right? We already have a request for, uh, for the spec change to make it unified, right? So it's one of the questions usually people ask it. So why you have one annotation for uh, type and package and another one for a field? So that, this is what we have now, right? So uh, possibly a good change would be to use JSONB nullable for both cases. Uh, again, uh, you can apply it globally as well with null values of JSONB config. You don't need any annotation, just with null values through and with seed for uh, the entire scope. Custom association. Okay, in, in case you don't have public or protected default constructor, right? Uh, possibly you use constructor with arguments or you maybe you have a static factory method to create an instance. Uh, how to do, how to deal with that? Okay, JSONB creator annotation. So you annotate your constructor method with that. Uh, and uh, each parameter must be annotated with JSONB property, right? This is the use case when JSONB property used on parameter, right? So a sample here, look, we are deserializing that to the order class, right? So ID is fine and customer, customer has a type customer. So uh, Jason B, Jason looks here, uh, Jason B creator annotation is here, cool. So I use it to create the instance. Call it and there are some parameters. So basically it looks like Jason B property ID should be mapped here to this parameter, right? So it finds ID here maps it there, calls the constructor, creates the object, and deserializes the rest of properties, which are right? So it's quite convenient. Date number formats also can be changed. JSONB date format, JSONB number format annotations, specifying the format on fields. Or globally, JSONB config again, with date format with locale. Binary encoding. 
free supported by byte base 64 base 64 url you can provide your ones only free supported right and you plug it in you change it using with a binary data strategy method of config here is a sample so creating config base 64 for instance and jsonb engine and uh, use it however uh, this is iJSON, what I was talking at the beginning. So here is the link. If you would like to see what is that, just follow the link written about that. And uh, by default, uh, it's supported. Three exceptions. The exceptions are listed here. I'm not going to go through because we don't have much time. So uh, just remember to have three exceptions. If you would like to uh, uh, read it more about that, then uh, download my slides. I'll put it on SlideShare or wherever. Uh, take a look. Uh, it's possible to switch on strict compliance with iJSON using JSONB config. By default, it's full without this thing. And uh, uh, we have three minutes for our powerful features, and these are adapters and serializers, right? So basically, adapters expired by JAXB uh, uh, type adapters, right? What is that? If we have a uh, class which we don't like how serialized by default, I'm talking about serialization now, right? Uh, or we don't have access to its source code, right? It's provided uh, in a jar. Uh, how to deal with that? Okay, easy. You create an adapter which converts that class to some other class which you have access to uh, source code and you can annotate it, you can customize it however you want. Right, and this adapter is called during serialization and deserialization. So basically, it converts, serializes that uh, target class, and deserialization the opposite way around. Right, so you can create it and plug it in using annotation on the type, or uh, use with adapters method of JSONB config. And it actually, this method accepts a list. Right, so you just uh, add your uh, instances of your adapters there, blah, 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 if you have not one, if you have many, so this is very convenient. Uh, to be fair, I never used uh, uh, annotation. We always used that method. And uh, another more advanced thing is serializers. Adapters we don't use actually, um, it's like a high level thing, but this is a low level thing because it actually influences the serialization, deserialization process. So look, uh, a very special interface which has uh, access to JSON generator, which is JSONP, which is what's used for uh, serialization. And for deserialization, look, we have JSON parser there. So we actually can use JSONP, which is the JSONP classes, to manually work with JSON itself, right? So uh, one of the use cases uh, which I covered on the sample is uh, polymorphic types, right? So uh, uh, these serializers, these serializers are actually good for this kind of use cases. Again, we can plug it in using annotations or JSONB config. With serializers, again, here is a list, and deserializers, here is a list, right? Uh, and this is the demo I was talking about, so you can take a look. Uh, source code is here, and it covers JSON P and JSON B, right? So maybe you're not interested in that, but in this. And it's default mapping adapters, serializer, deserializers, mapping of generic class. So for instance, if you have a list of whatever doc, right? Uh, how to properly deserialize it from JSON, uh, using together with JSON P, and also, uh, I think I forgot to put it here. No, I did actually, it's JSON P related, sorry, nothing. Uh, and that's it, just on time. Do you have any questions? No. So I assume that it's because my explanation was full and uh, uh, nice, so no questions. We finished. Thank you.